So this will be our fourth video working on unit two. And we can go through the unit module always to get to our assignment. And we can follow that on the course outline. Unit two is our introduction to compositing. It's where we do exercise number one. That's what we've been working on. Then you can skip to the end of the module if you've already started it and be reminded of the steps and the directions. So far, we've gotten to this step where we've put everything into um, Photoshop or PhotoP, and now we're just kind of cleaning it up. So I need to find my file. The other way you can get to the assignment, once you've started it, been introduced, and are working on it, I make this shortcut here underneath unit modules, which just says assignments, and it will take you right to where you post them. So for exercise one, you just click here, and it goes right to the discussion where we post them. We're going to be posting these today. Right? The instructions are long because it gives you step-by-step step within PhotoP. That won't be true in assignments. Okay, now i got to find my work. So I'm going to open up my folder, and I'm going to drag, drag it from my Documents folder onto my desktop. Right. I'll go ahead and put it right in the middle of my desktop. And as you can see up on the board, really helpful to clear your screen. It's the function key and then F11. We practiced that last class. We always want to work on our desktop through class, save to our desktop, organize from our desktop. And so I have an exercise one folder and I have a PSD file. If I just double click that, that will open up in Photoshop. If you have not used Photoshop on these machines before, because we started this in PhotoP, the, the online freeware, you might have to set up your Adobe account, right? But I am signed in. I'm good to go. If you're ever unsure whether you're signed in, just click on help and see if that's the email that you used. You can use a Gmail. You can use a private email. You can use your student email, but you have to have access to it. All right, so what do I have here in the assignment so far? First of all, this is actually something all of you should do. Check your resolution, because if you do a lot of work, but you don't have enough pixels for printing, then it's just not going to be a high quality image. So I'm going to turn off the music here. And I'm going to go to image, image size, and that will show me the resolution details. So it is 8 by 10 inches. That's the minimum size for this. At 350 pixels per inch. That's my preferred studio resolution. It needs to be at least 300. And that's in the assignment. Everything we submit for the class needs to be at least 8 by 10 inches by at least 300 pixels per inch. Print resolution. So if it's more than 8 by 10, you're good. And if it's more than 300, you're good. But if either of these is smaller than 8 or smaller than 10, right? or your resolution is fewer than 300 pixels per inch, we need to change that and improve your resolution before you continue working. And I have five different sources. You know, we spent a lot of time last class learning how to do image mining, finding good source material. We use Google Images with the search tools. So remember, when you use Google Images, to click on tools, only look for images that are large and that have a color of black and white. And you can do any of your favorite cartoons. So if I do Johnny Quest, which I mentioned last class, it's copyrighted. It's owned by Hanna-Barbera, right? But if I use those tools and say large and then color black and white, I'm only going to get images that are at least a thousand pixels in one dimension. Now, some of you have made the mistake, which makes sense. We're starting out of trying to save the images from here, from the thumbnail. And you'll see that that just has a generic name. And even though it's a high quality image, this is just the thumbnail preview of it. And it's terrible quality. So we never want to do that. Instead, when you want to look for an image and download it for your use, you have to right click on it and say open link in new tab. Or just click on it and you'll see the preview here. So either way, 
you will get to the full resolution image and you can save it from there and it will be large enough but because it's Google Images and the tags aren't always correct I then do the extra step of right clicking and say open image in new tab and then you can see the image in its full resolution and if that looks clean and good to use then go ahead and do it so you save at least five different references of good quality right because we're going to be isolating the line art you can also find really good resources on Pixabay this will help us with our assignments all of these are Creative Commons but I'm not going to find Johnny Quest on Pixabay because it's copyrighted and everything on Pixabay is Creative Commons open right but I might find like he has a dog named Bandit you know dog line art on Pixabay and then I can also limit on Pixabay to illustrations that are black and white but what I don't need to worry about is size because every file here is going to be larger than a thousand pixels and then if I click that second to last then download it it's going to go into my downloads folder then I just drag that to my desktop to work with and again function f11 will clear my to my desktop okay Ray once you get in I'll show you where you go for this assignment all right so I have done all of that and I have organized them into my assets folder in exercise one so I have a lot of ones that I downloaded from different sources and I chose five of them and then I started building them up and we can start from the very beginning here you build them up by creating a file that is at least 8 by 10 inches by 300 pixels per inch I like to go to 350 for studio and then how do you bring files in you drag and drop them in as long as they're a PNG file or a JPEG file they will drop in just fine if there's something else like an AVIF file they might do something weird like open up in camera raw so that's why we want to convert things to JPEGs or PNGs and for now because we haven't learned about all of that just use ones that are JPEGs and PNGs which are the most common because this is annoying <laughs> all right so you drag and drop them in and they come in as what's called a smart object it means they're referencing the original file you downloaded it should be large enough and good quality and it gives you what's called a, a transform box as soon as you bring it in which allows you to scale it by dragging from the corner and it allows you to rotate it and you just have to practice this and get used to it with this project because it's, it's all about manipulating other people's pixels to create our own jumble once you have it sized you hit return and then in order to edit it this is what most of us need to do to erase things away to clean it up into an image that we like we need to first rasterize it which is means not to reference the external image file anymore but to save those pixels within Photoshop or PhotoP to rasterize you right click on the layer and you choose the rasterize option layers that are rasterized that are fully pixels within the program they do not have a little box in their layer window smart objects will have this little document box this little black box and now I can edit this by deleting it if I ever want to change its size again I can hit command T which is up on the board or I can go to edit free transform and that shows you the, the shortcut as well my favorite is not just to rotate and scale it but it's to right click and warp it to push and pull in different directions like cookie dough after this video I'm going to come around and anyone that doesn't have the right resolution 8 by 10 by 300 or if your images look blurry I'm going to show you how to fix it but that can all be fixed by setting it up correctly to begin with now when I turn on all my layers 
so that I can see all of them, I want to make sure they're set to what's called multiply mode instead of normal mode. And you do that under the layer window in what's called the blending modes. And it's going to matter most for things that are JPEGs from Google Images. But if they're all on multiply, then you're going to see everything layered up on top of itself, right? And it might get really messy like this. So now what I want to do is start deleting. And I can do that. All we're doing is playing with the, um, the lasso tool. So I go to one layer at a time, and I can turn them off with the eyeballs. And then I'm just going to use my lasso. To pick part of it and delete it, just like I'm cutting it away with an X-Acto knife. And if I want, I can hit Command-T or go to Edit Free Transform and rotate them. I can right-click inside that transform box and warp them. But I'm just trying to play with this line art. Right? The reason you have to do five or more to meet the requirements is because that's going to require you to erase and to edit. And we want this not to be off of any one edge. We want it to be free floating. And we want each layer to be edited. So I'm going to take out the, the eyeball on this, this Aztec bird drawing and maybe take out the feet and maybe take out anything that overlaps really significantly with what's underneath. And now it starts to look like these lines are blending into these lines. And that's, that's the goal. You don't want to have one drawing, just aesthetically, you don't want to have one type of line art dominating. Okay, now the next layer. I can turn off the eyeball on the others and then just decide, okay, I don't want the head here, but I might want some of that outside line art. And you have to select the layer before you can delete from it, right? So make sure that the layer is gray or you'll be deleting from another layer. And I'm just using my mouse. But as we get more refined, we might want to use tablets, which we can get at the back by leaving our ID or our phone or our keys. So we remember to return the tablet with the stylus by the end of class. All right. Some of us have gotten pretty far in this exercise. Some of us are just starting out. We are going to submit this at 11 o'clock. So we have about 40 minutes before we submit this even if it's unfinished. And then we're going to do what's called a presentation critique. And a presentation critique is when we're going to show it to the class and then answer a question about it. And that's going to help us understand the kind of shared struggle that are these exercises. Right? As long as I have five, I'm meeting the requirements. But to transform it into your own composition, like your own unique collage, you need to be willing to make each individual layer unrecognizable, right? So it's your own thing that you're making. Now, I'm going to show a really fun technique because it's difficult to kind of blend everything together and to select and erase. So I'm going to show you a new selection tool. And my first Photoshop teacher back in 1996, when it was Photoshop version 3, their big thing was to use Photoshop well means to use the selections well. 